Hello, this is Red McNed, and welcome back to the saga. I'm here finally, back in the ye old village, new old village. After spending a couple episodes off in distant lands, I'm finally back, finally ready to do some things. And just looking around, there's a couple things that have changed. Here's one, the uh, huge pile of boxes that were all over here or chests or whatever, are gone. But there's also a couple other things that have added. A couple new buildings kind of scattered around. So I've got a few things I'd like to show off. And also a pretty big thing I'd, I think it's time to do in this is I really want to show my method for putting paths and building paths. Now, there's a lot of people that show how to make paths, and they're good, actually. There's some, you know, things have come a long ways in the many years that people have played Minecraft. But I think that my strategy for uh, putting them in is kind of unique, and I'd like to share that with you. If you want to skip ahead to the tutorial on how I make paths and put paths in, you can look in the description where I always put time listings for important events in the videos. But for now, I'd like to show what I've been up to. So, for off the bat, I, I'd actually would like to explain where this all is. Perhaps you would have guessed it sooner, but I started to get kind of tired of going through the cave system over there just to get to the warp room. So, I went ahead and put a very secret one right here, and it pretty much goes to... Uh, this is where I've stuck all the uh, chests for the time being. Uh, this other portal over here leads to the other end of the uh, secret place portal and this one is connected up to the one that we just came in through so if I wanted to I could use either of those but it is really nice just to have a quick way to uh, get to supplies and uh, food whatever so that's there's that also for the record this is at about 112 the y-axis so it's actually really close to uh, bedrock on the roof and I think this is kind of a nice place to uh, make my branches and mine and directions and stuff but let's head back out I decided to go ahead and sort of fence off the uh, the garden to make it look just a little bit more official and if we come around this way The gate is right over me, yeah. and I also had a little bit of fun with uh, coarse dirt, kind of putting it wherever there wasn't there wasn't anything growing inside of here, like right there and just on the other side of this stuff. You know, places where you'd probably be walking around and not necessarily planting things, but maybe there's not like a whole bunch of grass there. I finally uh, took the took the rabbits out of the uh, out of this house here and gave them an actual looking home like thing so I gave them a little pen there's a door there and I put a door there and something that's sort of become a theme is I've put these little sheds here and this is just coarse dirt in the front that'll make more sense later but just a really humble uh, shed thing there's also one um, over there Haha, -ha, right here. And this is these are all pretty much exactly the same. And a little bit extra over here. I decided that this was gonna be like a flower shop down here. So this was a this is a nice area where um you can come in here and uh these are the flowers of this region. The ones I've been able to find in the uh in the domain of this town and the rocks behind it. And there's also one over, can I see it if I do this? Yeah, it's over there. There's also uh, this place I kind of uh, crudely threw, to, threw together for um, whatever sort of activities go on in a, in a place like this with cows, you know. And I put the pigs over there, separate them. A little bit more breeding needs to happen on this side, I think, for them to catch up. But, you know, I, I got faith that in the long run there'll be a, They'll be a contender, but you know this. 
this is basically my guess of what happens at a place that kills things. They just like, you know, come over here, you open this, go like, hey, well, get over here, you know, grab a cow or whatever, go, and then you have uh, cows. Uh, if I come up with a better thing, then I, I'll probably build it. But for now, that's fine. And I, I was able to use the um, the coarse dirt all inside of here. And I thought it was clever to have a path leading to the gates. I just had to violently clear my throat. The path going to the gates to show kind of where the, uh, the trampled grounds are. And I might actually sprinkle more of it inside of these just to sh because that's where, you know, they are. Uh, this was kind of made with three tall wood, wood, <laughs> yeah, oak woods, uh, all spaced between three here and uh, here, here, and here, wood pillars, or wood fence pillars going up, and a roof that gradually gets uh, up there, up there, yeah, yeah, beautiful. And finally, something else that I added. Uh, this is not my design. This is by a uh, YouTuber by the name Dukon, or Dukon Red One. And I've been uh, very much enjoying checking out that channel. But this is actually really nice. I said before I wanted some kind of a chapel or church. And this one looks like it fits quite nicely here. And as a bonus to this one, it came with an interior and I thought this was actually really clever I changed up a few things because the original build uh, was using shaders and stuff and this is more of a vanilla type texture that I've been playing with so this is kind of what ended up happening these are really cool with the uh, fence gates and the trap doors making the pews and up here, nice uh, bell tower with a uh, nice bell tower with some uh, pretty good views. And I went ahead and put a <laughs> chunk of gold in here. And here's a view of it from the front. I kind of like how the hills really do complement it. It's almost like it was built for it. And to be honest, there's really no bad spot to view this from. Like it just looks really good everywhere, so I'm um, I'm pretty pretty happy about that. It's almost given Mr. Clock House Light House Tower Clock Tower run for its money. And yeah, like I said, I put the portal down there. So I believe that's pretty much everything that's uh, been changed up. So now on to the paths. So paths are an interesting thing because. While not entirely necessary to make an interesting Minecraft world, they do make it more interesting and really kind of give you an, a glimpse of how those who dwell in it, if it's a dwelling type location, get around and interact with other locations within it. Now without paths, you can do a lot, you can make a lot of cool stuff, but if you end up with a lot of structures, landmarks, places that are disconnected, like you can tell there are parts where people could walk across things. But sometimes paths can really do a lot to enrich the story of the locations that you're building in. So one of the best ways to make a village or town look like it's a thriving place is to add things like paths. So I'd like to show you how I do that. This is just a guess. I don't really claim to be the the sole knowledge holder of the how paths come to be or how they originate. But my general view is that People tend to walk along certain paths or certain directions to get from place to place. Like if a, if you were here on this bridge, or say you were at Mr. Flower Shop over here, and you wanted to go say hi to whatever shop that is, you would find a path of least resistance probably and walk to it. What begins to happen from one point to another is that the ground starts to wear down and you start to actually see a footpath sort of emerge as if you know within the grass and I'm using I'm using coarse dirt to represent this 
And maybe I could have a better tool like a shovel. But as you walk along, this doesn't have to be perfect, and it won't be, trust me. Just put like a little hole here and there, or at least that's what I'm doing, to demonstrate the fact that as you keep walking back and forth along a line, you start to kind of wear down the ground, and it starts to actually, like the grass around it might die. And you can even see this in places where there's paved paths, but there's the paths that people actually take you'll see, oh, that's clearly a path people would rather walk. And I figure that eventually those become the actual paths. Like these opportunity places where, because um, why would they build a bridge right here if it wasn't a really easy way to get across? So the first thing I do whenever I put paths down, put, path, put paths down in a village is find all those connecting lines. So another spot that this path could go is to the village. Now I haven't finished the village so we're just gonna have to just pretend that it exists. But we have this sort of path here that well we already kind of figured out would lead to the village so I might as well pretend like I'm really heavy-footedly walking along it and each of these is going to be a coarse dirt that I uh, that I'm digging here. Let's see. This comes through here. I'm not really going to go too far into this because this is going to be a project for another day. But the path eventually comes down here, so I'll just fill in all those holes with coarse dirt. All right. And what you end up having here, and I'm going to kind of sprint along this to make it go a little faster is a rudimentary, very rudimentary path that is only there just to kind of indicate that people could walk along it and have probably walked along it. So I'm looking at basically any spots where people would eventually want to walk. This is a much more well-defined path. So here, I'll do this one too. The trick to making a little bit thicker path than before is to make sure at least um, at least parts of it are at least corners of it are connected. Yeah. You don't have to go overboard. But just kind of um, you have like a sweep radius kind of like this. Like it's going to be no wider than this. So you just pick a random moment to hold down the mouse while kind of sweeping back and forth. And that ends up being, <laughs> I got the exact spots that I replaced. But that usually gets a pretty good result. So after going along the path once or twice and uh, replacing the blocks on the ground as you go, you end up with these uh, dirt paths that start to really take shape. And really start to, uh, these these will be the most basic form of path, likely. <laughs> At least that's how I that's how I do it. It's the most basic form of path I have, and this type of path is more like an opportunity path that can go between any two places, like even a shop and its uh, storage shed can have a path like this. It just won't go um, into the more paved territories or use any more remarkable substances than just the very dirt on the ground that's been trampled. So after you get all of those paths in, you start to get sort of a, a strange mess of uh, different paths that can be uh, possibly taken to get to various places. And some spots can get kind of messy, like this, this part has a path going this way, a path going to the house, a path going to the side there, and a path going up toward where the mines are. You know. And there's a, a place coming down here. So there's, you know, they can get, it, 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 I get it. 
So it can get a little bit complicated, but don't get too worried because these are just the footpaths that could be taken from anywhere to anywhere. And that's all they're going to have to be ultimately. So beyond this point, you don't have to worry about a lot of these. The next step is to figure out which of these paths would be sanctioned by the city. And I guess by that I mean like what paths would be the official paths. Like if everyone got together and was to draw an actual map. They wouldn't put every path, like these little spots where someone might cut a corner, or this spot where someone might jump the river just to get over here, because I actually do that a lot. That's why I put that in there, because I do that. Um, but not all those are going to be sanctioned. Like this path that goes from the village down here into the mine seems like a pretty darn important one. And maybe only one of these paths that goes to each house. So maybe just this one. Um, looks like this one. Maybe this one too. It's tough to decide. But this path's important because it leads to the church. So we have to pick one that goes to probably this one to there. And up the hill to the church. And yada yada to any places over there. So for this part... I'll use what I'm standing on right here, which is a bunch of gravel. And it's both to literally lighten things up, but also, I guess the it starts to look like it's a more of a paved path when you start putting things like gravel into it. So doing a similar thing as before, I would just uh, kind of do sweeps. I don't know why I'm not hitting the ground. Okay, here we go. And don't worry if they kind of go out wide. <laughs> Just kind of try to keep it within three blocks, three or four blocks, sweeping. And all these new holes that are coming up are going to have gravel in them instead of uh, dirt or coarse dirt. And I don't think you have to worry about these being too close to each other because if anything these are slowly going to layer to fill out the path and make it wider they don't have to connect on their own eventually all these textures are going to fill up the whole path so I'll show you what this looks like when it's done for this main path after that extra color kind of gets filtered in there like that you start to see that path's a little bit more interesting than the others it's like oh this one kind of stands out from all of the uh, the other, I don't want to say riffraff, but riffraff. <laughs> and uh, seems to either be trodden more often, trodden more often, or it's been given extra attention. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to each path that I think is important. Well, as you can see, the paths, the main paths anyways, are starting to take shape and start to lead places that are cool. I guess I didn't get all of them. I probably could have put one in there. But that's why it's going to take a nice vantage point just to see. Um, but this should... Oh, I guess there's another section right there. But that gets a kind of general idea of the layout of the town as a, you know, as the town might have planned it. And then all these footpaths might have came extra. The reason why I don't really mind putting all these extra paths here is because if you just let it be grass... It's actually kind of plain. Like, you end up getting with a bunch of this. Like, there's a reason why they call it the plains. <laughs> but, you know, seriously. But seriously, people. The next thing I'd want to do is just kind of keep going, but instead get we're getting more and more substantial types of blocks. And what's cool with these is you can start making half slabs and stuff. And I might even put in a few of the wood blocks, too, for the main paths. Whenever they're... Uh, having hills to climb. So let me get down to one of them. Over here we have kind of a uh, a slanting hill. It's not too steep, but it does kind of have some sudden drops if we just kept it at is is. So for these what I would do is get a few half slabs of uh, wood and cobblestone and maybe some stair pieces too and start kind of smoothing out the transition. It wouldn't be too jarring stylistically since the bridges also have cobblestone and wood on them. And a lot of the structures have a similar theme too. 
And this might take a more or less finesse than before, but if you're really unsure, uh, I find the wood looks best when you have a, at least a couple pieces next to each other. And I'll start with half slabs and just make it so that you could actually uh, climb up like you might normally. So basically whenever there's an edge that looks kind of rough, go ahead and uh, give it a little bit of, uh, <laughs> I guess whatever material you find looks good. Now I'm just using slabs right now, but you could definitely use stairs. If that's something that sounds like it would be interesting to you. Like something like that. And it could even be like that, so it doesn't really make sense. Like, it still helps. It's still not as jarring as it would be otherwise. So now it's functionally able to go up and down without jumping, which is usually a good indicator, at least to me. And I would say make sure all the paths um, pass that test. On to more steeper hills. This uh, this one ended up being really steep. So I already noticed that there's sort of like a switchback possibility going on here. So I think I'm going to play into that. Uh, instead of digging into the hill right away, what I'll probably do is take advantage of uh, the stair blocks. Um, maybe you have a few of these. And sort of... I guess really try to figure out what direction the, um, the switchbacks are wanting to go and have them go that way. So I'm sort of um, going in between materials right now. And it seems like it's doing the trick. Like functionally, if it's to where I can go up it without jumping, that's usually pretty good. So a half slab at a time. And sometimes you can do stuff like that where it doesn't make any sense what <laughs> what direction it's aiming. Alright, so that ends up being a uh, a bit of a strange path. Uh, if it looks like it's too squared off, you can always do something like that. So yeah, this is definitely a uh, getting to look like a really messy path, kind of old. But that's fine, that's kind of the the way I'd want this one to go out and go down. Be besides those, making sure all the ups and downs are really smooth as far as the flat ground, I would say the very most important paths, which I guess are the ones where you put the gray blocks on, you can start putting, digging smaller mounts and putting the other types of blocks down. Like, I would do one pass doing stuff like this, and whenever I dug down out of... I would put uh, cobble there, for instance. And with half slabs, you can go either on top or below. Either way, it's going to look well, interesting, I guess. Although it's kind of cool when you mix it up. You have up and down going on.
Maybe stairs sometimes. This looks like there's a piece missing. That's all. <laughs> Alright, I believe all the paths are in. And I think I'm just about finished. Uh, a couple, I guess, final notes or final things to say. I only use the wood on the parts of the uh, the ground that slope just to give that extra reinforcement. And I didn't use it on any of the flat parts. Just the parts where it kind of goes up and down. And only sometimes. Like maybe there's one on the other side of that. Maybe. <laughs> the reason I did that is there, there's uh, things like uh, having a recessed block or having a uh, stairway in the ground. And those are cool random features, but they're no longer really cool random features if they're spanned all over the place. So sometimes I'll just confine things to a certain area, like uh, this type of block will only be used when you're going up and down, but not on flat spots. And I guess it just, to me, it looks like it gives it a little extra support, and it might get a little bit too cluttered looking if I just put it in everything. Also, some of the paths that weren't um, weren't originally for the, like like these paths are supposed to be for the like the city. That's why there's cobblestone still left in them. These ones I went ahead and put a little gravel in, kind of really sparsely, just kind of sweeping, but not as frequently as like when we were putting in the uh, coarse dirt. And that's just because it's been worn down that much more, and I wanted to differentiate those paths from the paths that aren't are worn down even less so really the ultimate goal of this is to kind of show the the hierarchy of paths that are used like this is a main path of the of the uh, town or whatever this is the one that gets used a lot you know, maybe as a shortcut maybe as whatever and then this is one that gets used much less rarely but you can definitely see it's used and you can tell it goes to the shop, so it must be uh, connected to that somehow. So it's sort of uh, all of this, all this effort into not just making interesting paths, but trying to have the paths demonstrate certain things. It's, it's all to kind of give the place more story and to kind of, you know, make it feel that much fuller. Like, make it feel more, like there's more depth to the place. Like, if there's a, a random trail that comes across here, it looks like it's not used very much at all, but it is used nonetheless. You could say, oh, cool, whenever this goes. And then see that it's kind of a shortcut over there. Whereas, this is, like, what the city wanted to do. And this is one that gets used quite a bit, just because they don't want to walk all that way and then come back. <laughs> probably just walk here, especially since that's that's the village over there where everyone sleeps. So it's all kind of storytelling without really telling. I'm, I'm really trying to see how much of that I can put in this. So here's one last kind of aerial sweep of everything from the original spot. You can see the, uh, the web of paths are still there, it's just, you know, they have a sort of a hierarchy system. So they're, they're only going to look so good though without having any plant life because if you noticed there's besides the garden over there I'm taking all the trees and grass and everything out of here just so I could do the uh, first do the ground like put make the ground the way I want it and put the buildings in and then put the path in so this is my order of almost customizing a region uh, then I do like waterways and stuff or somewhere before the paths probably uh, I might eventually dig this out to make it a little bit deeper looking than just like a one block shallow. Whoa. Oh god. Oh, I forgot about that. So the next step would be putting in all the trees and wildlife and flora and fauna. Uh, maybe the wildlife is good to be reserved into the... Uh, the. Oh my. It would be good to just keep reserved into there. But that is really the next step. I have, I have plenty of bone meal from the grinder, and I have plenty more to speak about on all that stuff too. So uh, that'll be in a very near future episode. But until then, this is Red McNed. 
See ya!